This episode of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast is brought to you by Legacy Staffs, which are crafted by the Brazos Walking Stick Company in Waco, Texas. You can go to BrazosSticks.com and use the name Mac Payne, one word, at the checkout and get 10% off your next order of the Legacy Staff or Cane of your own design. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1816 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Alaskan Vietnam vets. Back in episodes 1643 and 1779er of this podcast, I talked about a special deal the government is offering to all Alaskan Vietnam vets. The plan was to give every Alaskan Vietnam vet 160 acres of land in Alaska. It sounded so wonderful. Unfortunately, unfortunately, those Alaskan Vietnam vets have discovered what many others have found when they go to the Babylon of government deals. Turns out that the pie is not that sweet. That's what seems to be happening with this group of Vietnam veterans. Sounds good, but when you get right down to the nitty-gritty, there's a few little drawbacks involved there. To update you on this situation, I'm going to share with you an AP story titled, Program Allows Some Alaska Native Vietnam Vets to Get Land. This story appeared on the Riverbend.com website. The reason I'm sharing it with you is to make sure you are updated on how the Vietnam veterans are being treated, regardless of what state they're from. They're all special people, and they all need to be treated well so the country can show its respect, admiration, and gratitude to this generation of veterans one as great as any that ever heeded the call of duty from its country. With that in mind, let's take a look at this story. Again, it's an AP story titled, Program Allows Some Alaska Native Vietnam Vets to Get Land. Dateline, Anchorage, Alaska. Stuart Carlo had a short life, but he lived every moment to its fullest. While serving in the Army, he bought a 1951 Mercedes and motored around Europe. After his service years, he roamed South America where he developed a love of photography and then later turned heads while driving an exotic Maserati to a construction job back home in Alaska. Carlo, a member of the Ko Yukon Athabascan tribe, was a math whiz from Fairbanks who quit college in 1967 to volunteer for the Army to serve in Vietnam. There, he was an aircraft controller who brought a lot of crippled aircraft in, said his brother, Wally Carlo of Fairbanks. Stewie would be an Alaska Native leader today if he had not been killed in a head-on collision while driving that Maserati in 1975, his brother said. Wally Carlo intends to honor his brother's legacy by applying for an allotment of 160 acres of land in Alaska owned by the federal government. Alaska Natives were allowed to apply for 160 acres of land under the 1906 Alaska Native Allotment Act. Before a new law went into effect in 1971, there was a big advertising push to urge Alaska Natives to claim title if they had not already done so. That coincided with the Vietnam War, when many Alaska Natives fighting in the war probably did not hear the plea. In 1998, another act allowed the veterans to apply for their land, 
But both Alaska Natives and Congress felt the window was too short to apply and an occupancy requirement wasn't fair. Last year, Congress passed the Dingle Act, expanding the window to apply for land and removing the occupancy provision. It is something that's really near and dear to our hearts to make sure this program's a success because we know that folks did not have the opportunity, said Chad Paget, the Bureau of Land Management's Alaska Director. That means Chad is a bureaucrat. You know what happens with bureaucrats. Continuing. The BLM and other federal partners have identified about a thousand Alaska Native service members or their descendants who might be eligible for the program and is in the process of notifying them. The military and Bureau of Indian Affairs are determining eligibility for another 1,200 people. There could be more since the BLM estimates 40% of the Alaska Native veterans or their surviving family members have moved out of Alaska and may not know the window will reopen to apply. The BLM also estimates about a third or more of the eligible veterans have died, but their heirs might be eligible. Veterans or family will have five years to select and apply for the land. That window will open sometime this fall. Currently, there are 1.5 million acres of land available for those allotments located in three parts of Alaska. The Bering Glacier area near Yakutut, the 40-mile area in Alaska's interior, and near Good News Bay in western Alaska. Now here is where we get into the weeds of this story. The land will have restricted titles, meaning veterans can't sell the land without approval from the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Those locations and that restriction have led to criticism from some combat veterans, including Chris Kiana, who wonders why the government thinks he would like 160 acres of inaccessible land between glaciers near Yakutat land on the complete opposite side of the state from where he was born. We're treated like third world people in a first world. Pathetic, Kiana said. Kiana was born in northwest Alaska in 1943 and calls himself an urban Eskimo since now he lives in Anchorage. He joined the Navy and served on a ship that saw heavy fighting in Vietnam. He didn't know Harold Rudolph at the time, but his ship likely lobbed shells over Rudolph's army unit during battles. Rudolph, who was part Alut and part Tlingit, was born in Valdez in 1948. He served in an artillery unit with the 25th Infantry Division, Tropic Lightning, near Saigon during his two-year tour. Both of them say the land being offered is not in their ancestral areas. It's off the road system and inaccessible. Challenges that are not appealing for men of their age. Paget said, we're trying to make lands available that are desirable and accessible. And access in Alaska is a lot different than what you might think of down in the lower 48. He continued... And unfortunately, most of the BLM lands is in an area where you're going to have to get there by boat, snowmobile, snow machines, or plane. It's just that's the way the land pattern is at this point, but that we're trying to make some changes to that, he said. The BLM is recommending that an additional 15 million acres become eligible for allotments. Let's hear from the veterans. Kiana and Rudolph have another solution. They would rather be paid cash for their allotments, say $3,000 an acre. Then they could use the $48,000 to buy a home elsewhere. Why don't they allow us a buyout so we can go buy a cabin close by, buy a house close by with a few acres? That's about what we can do with that amount of money, Kiana said. 
Instead, the government is offering land where we have to helicopter out to it in most cases or parachute into it. Does that make sense? Especially when you consider the age of most Vietnam veterans. We're getting on up there in years. By statute, the government can't do that, said Paget. Of course, what else would you expect a bureaucrat to say? He continued with this. That's something they have to take up with Congress. That's right. Another example of bureaucratic buck passing. Continuing. Wally Carlo would like to secure land near the Yukon River Bridge on the Dalton Highway. That's the supply road that runs north of Fairbanks to the oil fields on the North Slope. That's where other members of the Carlo family previously secured their allotments, but that area isn't currently being offered. Even if they could get that preferred land, Carlo can't imagine trying to sell it back for cash to the government. We believe that it's not for just our generation now, but for three or four hundred years, he said. Hopefully it'll stay in the family and we'll set up a trust to make that happen. Now you know the latest with the Alaskan Vietnam Veteran Land Giveaway Program. As usual with most government programs, there are a few hitches in it. But I'm sure they'll work it out. I invite you to go over to the podcast website, VietnamVeteranNews.com, episode 1816. There you will see a picture of Alaskan Vietnam vets Stewie Carlo and Harold Rudolph. It's nice to connect a face to the comments. That's the story about what's happening with these brave Alaskan Vietnam veterans. I hope they get it worked out to their satisfaction. They deserve it. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1816 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for coming to listen to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more that will be coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News. How about that? Ain't that a mess?